Good morning, my friends, and thank you for joining me for our morning devotional. My name is John Phipps, the lead pastor of Park Place Church in Pinellas Park, the friendliest church in town, and it is true. I don't care what anybody says. We are the kindest, sweetest church, not because of me, but because our people are just simple, salt of the earth. Um, they're not necessarily um, affluent. Um, I'm getting a lot of text messages at the same time. We are just simple people. And you're saying, yup, we are. We're simple people. We're salt of the earth people. And we're just loving and kind. So if you're looking for a good church, my friends, Park Place Church, would love to have you visit. Thank you, Pastor Mark, for joining me. Shelly, good to see you, my friend. And Hillary is getting a new puppy, by the way. She's decided to name her new puppy Sweetie. Okay, I think that's a great name for a little dog. And the little dog is very, very cute. I've seen a picture of it. Hillary, I'm happy that you're getting a new a new family member. I'm also happy, Hillary, that you're not moving. You're actually staying here in Pinellas Park or St. Petersburg, Florida. That's great. Great for us. I know you wanted to move down south to uh, Miami. Good morning, Gail. Thank you for joining me. And Dale Smith. And Michael Stanton, I see all your names just scrolling through there. Hope you guys are doing well. I was thinking the baseball game was on last night. It's not. It wasn't. It's on tonight. Tonight is a must-win game for the Tampa Bay Rays. They are down 3-2. to two. If they lose tonight, they lose the series. They lose the World Series. If they win tonight, it goes to Game 7. <clears throat> so be pulling for the Rays. Certainly I'll be watching maybe a little bit of it. I usually pop in and out, um, catch the scores and all that good stuff. Good to see you, Doug. Good morning, my friend. Um, but I'll probably watch the last two or three innings tonight. I don't mind staying up late. I like to stay up late. I stay up late most of the time anyway. I think last night I was up till about 11.30, 12 o'clock uh, with my mom. We were watching TV. She, she left early this morning to take her flight back to Michigan, but it was a nice visit with her. Good morning, Nancy. And Rick and Pastor Pat, thank you for joining me. Well, guys, we have something interesting to talk about today. But I want to share with you that it's not on Daniel. Um, I know you're excited for this study on Daniel, but I need more time. So I don't know when it's going to be. Uh, but I will be speaking on Daniel 9, 10, 11, and 12. Um, but I'm not even close to being ready. So I'm not trying to get your hopes up, okay? It will be coming. Today is going to be an interesting topic and an interesting lesson. I want to talk about jealousy today. I've got 18 listeners. Eventually, I'll have probably 25 or 28. We usually get up that high, and then we come back down to 25, 22, 23. But I just want to say, today we're talking about jealousy. And jealousy is, 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 is prevalent in our society. Why is jealousy so prevalent. Jealousy has always been prevalent. Remember, it was Cain that was jealous of Abel in Genesis because Abel offered a better sacrifice than Cain. So God pulled aside Cain and said to him, don't you know that you can give a better sacrifice and that I would accept that? And listen, my friends, Cain did not choose to change, but what he decided to do was to kill his brother because his brother offered a better sacrifice than he did. Now, I just want to tell you that jealousy is not new. Some of you struggle with jealousy. Maybe you're not struggling with it right now, but you have at some point in your life. But you're not alone. Everyone I know has struggled with jealousy at some time or another. But there's a good jealousy and there's a bad jealousy. And I'm going to define that a little bit better for you in a few minutes. Good morning, Mary and sweet Dina. Thank you for watching. Um, good morning, Rick. Good to see you, brother. Now, when I say there's a good jealousy and a bad jealousy, I just caused you to be confused. But let me just remind you that God says that he is a jealous God. The first time I read that in the Bible, I struggled with it. 
because I know that I am prone to jealousy, which is a negative behavior or a negative feeling, a negative feeling which produces sometimes a negative behavior. But how can God who is perfect, holy, righteous, be jealous? How can God be jealous? And so I ask you that question rhetorically now. We've got 20 people on here, so let's get started, shall we? Let's take a look at Exodus. We're going to spend quite a bit of time in the Old Testament today. So flip on over to Exodus chapter 20. I have my scribe there with us. Thank you, Pam. Exodus 20, verse 5. Exodus 20, verse 5. If you don't want to flip over there, I will read it for you. Exodus 20, verse 5. <clears throat> In fact, let's start at verse 4. Sorry, Pam. Under the Ten Commandments, here we are. You shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven, above or on the earth beneath or in the waters below. Verse 5. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God punishing the children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. Why is God a jealous God? Be He's a jealous God because he doesn't want us to put anything in front of him. He wants to have sovereignty in our lives. He wants to be our our, 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 our prized possession. If I love someone more than I love Dina in this world, not God, if I love someone else more than I love Dina, she has every right to feel jealous. For God has brought Dina to me. God has united us together. For the Bible says, for this reason, a man shall leave his mother and father and cleave or be united with his wife and the two shall become one flesh. My sweet Dina is number one. So our relationship with God has to be number one. There is nothing in this world that I love more than God. Be in, not because he's a jealous God, but because God is number one in my life. God is more important to me than Dina. Dina is not someone I love more than God. I love God more than Dina. But in this world, there is nothing... No one that I love like sweet Dina. But make no mistake about it. What the Lord is saying to us in Exodus 20, he is saying, You shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above or in the earth beneath. Now, the reason why he's talking about heaven above is why? Because Lucifer, who is now a fallen angel... Satan himself put pride and himself before God. Don't you know that if we serve a jealous God and he doesn't want us to put any graven image or any type of idol before him, that idol can be something we create or it can be ourselves, my friends? It can be our selfishness. Don't you know that when we sin against God, we are putting ourselves above the love that we have for God? We are saying that we are going to do it our way this time. We are going to put ourselves above our love for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's exactly what we're doing. We're putting ourselves on a pedestal. We're putting ourselves above God. So here, jealousy says this. It's a state or feeling of being jealous. Synonymously... <laughs> It is to desire something greater. Satan desired something greater than worshiping God. And therefore, he was cast out of heaven. His name was Lucifer, Satan, the devil. Why? Because he coveted that which God had. When you covet that which is not yours, my friends, it is sin. It becomes jealousy. It becomes sin in your life. I've got some other verses I want to share with you. Exodus 34, flip over to Exodus 34, 14. <clears throat> Exodus 34, 
14, we're talking about jealousy today. Do not worship any other God, for the Lord whose name is jealous is a jealous God. Thank you, Pam. Exodus 34, 14, I'll read it again. Do not worship any other God. Pastor, there are, is only one God. No, there's not, my friends. There are many, many gods. There's one true God, but there are many, many gods. One true God with capital G, many, many gods with small g's. For you can make yourself to be a god. I'm not talking about Greek mythology here, my friends. I'm talking about idol worship. And you can make yourself an idol by caring about your needs more than you do about God's. Anything in this world can be a God, my friends, if you worship it, if you set it above the one and true God, Jesus. Okay? It's a small g, but anything that you put in God's place is an idol, and it becomes a God. Not a true God, but a God in your heart, something that you are worshiping. So that's why he said, do not worship any other God, small g, for the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. Are you jealous, my friends? Are you jealous over somebody else? Maybe somebody who makes more money, maybe somebody who's been promoted, maybe somebody who knows more about the word of God or is stronger spiritually than you are. Are you jealous of them? Are you jealous of your neighbor? Do you covet what they have? Again, the word covetousness is, 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 is a synonym of jealousy. And it does control your life. That's good, Pastor Mark. It can. It can control your life. I love Deuteronomy 4, verse 24. Let's take a look at Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 24. So flip over to Deuteronomy with me. You'll find it right after the end of the Pentateuch. After Numbers, Deuteronomy 4, 24. This gets really good, guys. I love this lesson today because it applies to each and every one of us. Deuteronomy 4, verse, I think we're going to start with verse 24. Yes. For the Lord your God is a consuming fire, a jealous God. Wow. For the Lord your God is a consuming fire. What does it mean when it says the Lord our God is a consuming fire? Well, let's think about that. How, what, is, what is the parallel between what the Bible has to say about fire and God? Let's remember what it says in Acts chapter 2. Some of you knew I was going there. <clears throat> when Pentecost came on the new believers... Something rested on the head of the of the disciples, the the the, the, the believers, like 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 tongues of flaming fire above their heads. I think he burned away the chaff. Okay, you're saying what is the chaff? It is the sin in their life. They believed in Jesus Christ to be their Lord and Savior, but God wants to burn. Okay, fire is to purify. God wanted to purify their hearts and their minds, and he purified their tongues as well, didn't he? Because they spoke in foreign languages. My friends, God is a consuming fire which will burn everything that is not of God. But he is also a perfect gentleman, which means he will not burn away the jealousy that is in your heart unless you turn that over to him. If you want to hold on to your jealousy, your covetousness, your pride, your idol worship, your selfishness, your sin, God cannot consume what you do not give him, my friends. Write that down. That's good. 
God will not consume what you will not give him. But he is a consuming fire. So I give him my pride. I give him my arrogance. I give him my selfishness. God knows I need to. God knows it's there. Consume it by your fire. God is a consuming fire. I love that. A jealous God. One of my favorite songs, and you can look it up later on, 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 on the internet, YouTube, I guess. Google it. It's just a simple song. It's called Consuming Fire. And it's by Third Day. And it is so good. It's one of my favorite songs by my band, my favorite band, <clears throat> Third Day, Christian band. You'll love it. It's called Consuming Fire. It's a simple song, but it talks about just this. Let's go back to Deuteronomy chapter 4. You should still be there. Verse 23 and 24. Let's go to Deuteronomy 4, 23 and 24. <clears throat> Here it is. <clears throat> Be careful not to forget the covenant of the Lord your God that he made with you. Do not make for yourselves an idol in the form of anything the Lord your God has forbidden. We make idols. And then, of course, the Lord is a consuming fire. He's a jealous God. We make these idols, whether we make it ourselves or whether it's our car or whether it's our job or whether it's something that other people respect in this world. Maybe it's popularity. Maybe it's, it, 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 it's to be liked. Maybe it's those kinds of things, my friends. If you do not want to live countercultural, you do not want to live for the Lord. Because living for the Lord means to be countercultural. So they made him jealous with strange gods, small g. They provoked him to anger. And then in Deuteronomy 5 9, just flip over one page. Deuteronomy 5 9. I love this. You shall not bow down to them. Or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation who hate me. My friends, listen to me. God is telling us again from the Ten Commandments that there will be a price to pay because he is a jealous God. Deuteronomy 6 15 goes along with that. Flip over another page. Deuteronomy 6.15. For the Lord your God, who is among you, is a jealous God, and his anger will burn against you, and he will destroy you from the face of the land. Do not put the Lord your God to the test. I love that. I love that, my friends. His anger will burn against you if you do not place him number one in your life. Deuteronomy 6.15. I just want to read another scripture for you before we close. I'm not asking you to turn to it. Pam, you can certainly put this in there, but I just want to share with you Joshua 24.19. Joshua 24, 19. I have it here. I'm going to read it for you. Then Joshua said to the people, You will not be able to serve the Lord, for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgression or your sins. Joshua had had it with the people. They were being stubborn and stiff-necked. And he says, you will not be able to serve the Lord because his anger is against you, because he is a jealous God. And he loves you. And he wants to be number one in your life. And my friends, if the anger of the Lord is against you, you are in great trouble. 
You are in great trouble, my friends. It was Jonathan Edwards many years ago who preached a sermon, Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God. And I don't have the entire sermon in front of me this morning. I just want to share with you that Jonathan Edwards was a dynamic preacher. We have his sermons. You can look them up. But he preached a sermon called Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God. And God is saying to us that he is a jealous God, that he is a consuming fire, but that he is an angry God. He can be an angry God. Some of you think anger is sin, but it is not sin. The Bible says, do not sin in your anger. So there is a righteous anger that is permitted, my friends. Jesus was anger, angry when he went into the temple and he turned over their tables. And he says, you have taken my father's house, which is a house of prayer, and turned it into a den of thieves or robbers. Jesus was angry when he spoke to the Pharisees and the teachers of the law. He was angry at them. And so God can have a righteous anger because he hates sin. He has to hate sin because he's a holy God. My friends, he's a holy God and he loves us and he wants to be number one in our lives. So Joshua is reminding them, you're not turning away from the Lord in Joshua 24. And therefore, God will not forgive you because if you cannot turn your heart away from yourselves and your selfishness, what is left for you? But that God would consume you. Turn with me to Psalm 79, verse 5. Turn with me to Psalm 79, verse 5. Psalm 79, verse 5. <clears throat> How long, Lord... Will you be angry forever? How long will your jealousy burn like fire? I love this. This is not a psalm of David. Okay, this is a psalm of Asaph. But it doesn't change the fact that it is an honest question. Psalm 79.5 How long, Lord, will you be angry forever? How long will your jealousy burn like fire? I think God is jealous over our culture, over our society that is turned away from God. I believe that. And it makes me sad because God wants to be on the throne of our hearts, my friends. This is the temple of the Holy Spirit. For we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. We have the Holy Spirit living in us if we are born again, if we are saved and sanctified, my friends. And God is a jealous God. There is no room in this heart for, for, for pride. There is no room in this heart for lust. There is no room in this heart for selfishness and sin. God is a jealous God. He is a consuming fire. How long O oh Lord, will you be angry? Will you be angry forever? Will your jealousy burn like fire? Psalm 78, 58. Flip over one page. Psalm 78, verse 58. Here it is. They angered him with their high places, that is their worship um, the worship places that they had set up that were not for the Lord. These are for idols. They angered him with their high places. They aroused his jealousy with idols. You see, we may be arousing God's jealousy in ways we don't even know because we're being selfish, because we're putting other things before God. Let's look at first. Corinthians 6 19 flip over to the New Testament we're almost finished first Corinthians 6 19 
1 Corinthians 6, 19 says this. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. Think about that for a minute. That's exactly what I'm trying to tell you, is that you are a temple of the Holy Spirit, and you serve a jealous God with a righteous jealousy, with righteous anger. That's who he is. 2 Corinthians 11.2 will be our last verse. Flip on over to 2 Corinthians, if you would, with me. 11.2. Let's start with verse 1, and then we'll read verse 1 and 2. <clears throat> 2 Corinthians 11, verses 1 and 2. Paul is the preacher to the church of Corinth, and he writes, I hope that you will put up with me in a little foolishness. Yes, please put up with me. I am jealous for you with a godly jealousy. I promised you to one husband, that is Christ, so that I might present you as a pure virgin to him. I love that. Thank you, Pam, for writing those verses for us. I am jealous for you with a godly jealousy, he says. I am jealous for you with a godly jealousy because the Lord is reminding the people that he is a jealous God. He is a loving God. Paul is saying, I love you, but I want you to be sold out for Jesus and nothing else. No other idol, graven image, foreign image, whatever. No other sin put nothing between you and God. My friends, I am jealous for you with a godly jealousy. That means I want you to serve Jesus and only Jesus. His name is Lord Jehovah. He is the only God. And if there is something in your life, my friends, that is taking precedence where God needs to sit on the throne, you've moved God over a little bit and you put that little idol right there and you're worshiping at it. And maybe it's you. Maybe it's your pride. Maybe it's something about you. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's something that you've been engaged in. Maybe it's some, some sort of sin. Maybe it's alcohol or drugs or internet pornography maybe you have you have um you have warmed yourself at the world's fire you have found comfort and you've been relaxing at the world's campfire my friends you are not living countercultural you are not living a godly life if you put anything before it, before jesus and so i just ask you to search your hearts we serve a loving god he's a jealous god he can be an angry God. You better believe he has a righteous anger. I don't want to see that righteous anger in my life. But I do pray that that consuming fire would purify my heart and my life and make me everything that God wants me to be today. I'm not talking about yesterday. And I'm not talking about tomorrow. I don't want to put anything before God today. Would you pray with me? Father, we come before you right now. We know you're a jealous God. You made it very clear. We know that you don't want any idols before you. Father, I pray that you would, that you would wipe away those idols from us. Anything that we have placed ahead of you, Lord, that you would take away those things. That you would remind us that you are a jealous God, but that your, your jealousy, Lord, provokes your anger, a righteous anger, and that we will be judged accordingly. Father, let us live our lives in such a way, God, that we put you first, not because we fear you and your anger, though that might be part of it, but because we adore you because you are gentle and you are kind. And Jesus, you are so sweet to us. And there is joy 
and being in the center of your will. And there is no joy where there is sin. And there is no joy where there is idols. So Lord, I pray that we would put you first today. Walk with you, love you, cherish you, and spend time with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, my friends, for joining me for this devotion. Our time is up. It is 1130. Uh, I hope you learned something new about the Lord today. Yes, he's a jealous God. And that may, that may surprise you. But you know what? We all struggle with jealousy. Just as you may be jealous of a friend or a neighbor, get that out of your heart. There's a good jealousy, and, but most jealousy is bad. When God is jealous over you, he just means that he wants all of you. All your life, all your possessions are his, all your heart is his. Don't turn away from Jesus. Find joy in serving him only and be willing to sacrifice yourself. I love you guys. Have a great day. Today is Tuesday, which means tonight I will be with sweet Dina. I think we're going to be at home tonight for this prayer meeting. Sweet Dina and I will be with you at 6 p.m. Be with us on my Facebook Live. We'll be taking your prayer requests. Please have them ready. We'll see you this evening at 6 p.m. Be blessed. I love you guys.